live from San Antonio, Mike Taylor. Damn Dallas Cowboys have already got somebody suspended, man. You know, it's the Cowboys. Not that there's not other dudes on other teams that don't get suspended, but boy, it's the Cowboys. Cowboys doing Cowboys things. It is Ask Whip Tuesday. Welcome in here. It is another episode of Mike Taylor Live presented by many fine supporters and partners of our show. It is Taylor, it is DJ LG, and here we are live from DJ LG Studios, another one of these kick-ass shows as we come on here and kick ass and start off with what we do on Tuesdays, and that is Ass Whip Tuesday. What's whipping your ass and why? For me, it is we're not even a week into Cowboy training camp, and a dude's been suspended already. Uh, Ronald Jones, the veteran running back, you know, like I've, I've never had a problem with PEDs unless it gets you kicked off the team. Don't get caught. <laughs> um, he didn't get kicked off the team, but the league has suspended him. So Ronald Jones, the veteran who, oh, he's been around a little bit. The Cowboys brought him in um, in the offseason uh, after deciding to roll without Zeke Elliott. And not that I don't even know what kind of role they were hoping he would play. He's a veteran, you know, semi-spare insurance card pickup just in case they need him. He's not terrible. He's an NFL-worthy player, but, you know, he was banged up last year a lot and didn't even play a whole lot, but he's had a he's had a season or two that were decent. Anyway, so it's not like he's this massively crucial guy, but when your position, the running back position's in a bit of flux. Again, let's not overrate the running back position, but Ronald Jones getting his ass suspended. He's going to miss the first two games. How are you going to fit in with the system? How are you going to learn how to be a cowboy in your first year? If he's in his third year, man, it's two games. Guys do PEDs. It is what it is. He's getting older. He's trying to, God knows what he was doing. Maybe he was just trying to recover, stay in the game, doing whatever he can, willing, willing and risking to get caught in order to make money before he's out of the league, which he's not an idiot. He knows that he'll be out of the league at some point. But, dude, it's your first year. Don't get caught. So I'm not pissed at Ronald Jones because he's on the juice. I'm not sure if he's juicing, but that's just kind of what we say for all encompassing PED pops. So I don't know if he is juicing anabolic steroids or taking pills or whatever, whatever, maybe the cream on his ass cheeks. I have no idea. I'm not pissed that he was doing them. I get it. I'm pissed that he got caught, and that's an ass whip. And so Ronald Jones will miss the first two games of the Cowboys season. Uh, we're sports horny for the Cowboys, but we won't see Ronald Jones much. And it just, it's not, I don't give much shits about Ronald Jones, but it just got me to thinking here on Ass Whip Tuesday, maybe it's just time to go ahead and re-sign Zeke Elliott already. Just freaking do it. I, I, I thought that when they released him, he'd probably let himself go. We'd start seeing memes of him, you know, people fat shaming him because he's, you know, he's gotten a real big boned in the off season, not having a team. But man, that dude's dead. He stayed in really good shape. I saw that he did it. He had a tryout last week for, Gosh, I want to say the Patriots or earlier this week, maybe over the weekend he did. And there was some scuttle that New England's considering signing Zeke Elliott. Maybe it's time for Dallas just to quit fucking around and bring in Zeke Elliott. That's kind of an ass whip too. Just go get Zeke, put him back on the roster. Tell Ronald Jones, you're a dumbass. He suspended two games. He'll probably never even see the light of day anyway. Now that he's got himself suspended just maybe go get Zeke Elliott, you know? And again, we're just talking about running backs, but you still have to have some. It's not that they're not valuable on the field. They're just not valuable against your salary cap. You know, they drafted this little, almost said midget. They almost draft, they drafted this short kid, Deuce Vaughn. And by the way, him being five foot five, that's an ass whip too. I wish Deuce Vaughn were at least five foot seven. Five foot five? It's unbelievable that he's even draftable, much less getting drafted. But can you have two dudes under five foot seven on your team? I just wonder if you know Deuce Vaughn. If he's gonna, if Deuce Vaughn makes the club, which he probably will, because they like his daddy, um, and his daddy works for the team. Deuce Vaughn may push my boy Cavante Turpin off the team. Cavante Turpin was an okay punt returner last year. He was fine in his first year after being MVP of the. USFL, whatever it was. I think Cavante Turpin may get cut if Deuce Vaughn 
has a good training camp. Okay, I'm just all, that all being said, I just don't want to see two little dudes who look like it's take your kid to work day uh, on the Cowboys sideline this season. Anyways, I just I get asked whipped by running back talk anyway, especially lately because a bunch of them are like, we want more money. I want a bunch of money. And then all of them are kind of like, well, I guess we're never going to get it, which is why Saquon Barkley took a knee last week and went ahead and signed his one-year deal with the Giants. Um, but Ronald Jones getting himself suspended puts the Cowboys not in too, too big of a hole. But I just wonder if Jerry wakes up this morning and said, fuck it, call Zeke. Just get Zeke's ass back on the team. I want me some glory, hope. Keep Tony Pollard as your primary one. You, you, you know, keep your running game based around Tony Pollard. If Deuce Vaughn can play some, fine, use him. Make him your Darren Sproles or whatever. But just go get Zeke's ass in here and put him back on goal line like you had last year and just and just be done with it already. All right, what's whipping your ass today and why? DJ LG. Yo. Yo. Yeah. Ford Motor Company Ford is Motor whipping company. my ass. Yeah. All right, Ford fine Motor American company. company you're going after. Yeah, unfortunately. Why? Yeah. Um, I placed an order for a truck last uh -huh. September, Yeah, I want to say. Yeah, and I got an email that said, uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to deliver that. So go ahead and place another order for a 2024 model, and maybe we can deliver that model, which would be a hybrid. But then they also said, but there's zero chance of you getting a hybrid, so please switch to a gas engine. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I so, think I followed F all that. Ford Motor Company. Okay. I think I followed that. You bought a you bought a car. I haven't bought it yet. Oh, okay. I ordered. You I ordered, ordered a car. Yeah, I ordered a new model, yeah. Why wouldn't you go to one of the many fine dealerships all over San Antonio and just buy one off the lot? Well, no, you do have to go to a dealership, but they oh, have, you, you, you can't place an order directly through Ford. You have to go to a dealership, which is a terrible... Sorry, dealers, but I don't like that sales model at all. But oh, okay. I wish I could order directly from Ford, but anyway... Yeah, so they just they can't produce enough of the hybrid models of this particular car, okay. and they are trying to force people to change to the all gas engine, and I did. Okay, yeah, so I did. A lot, a lot just came out of your, your your mouth. Okay, so you 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 ordered a car online. Basically, Rather yeah. than well, I went the... to a dealer okay. and placed an order. Oh, and you they did? put the okay. order in with four. Okay, got yeah, it. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm old school. I'm just, I'm, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm thinking about, you know, how we use, how we used to buy cars, where you go and wait at a car lot for nine hours while they fuck with you and y'all haggle and you go you, back yeah, and forth yeah. and they call banks to see if you could, they could approve a loan for you and all this kind of thing. Well, yeah, I still have to go through you all that. Once that. the car gets delivered <laughs> to the dealership, I still have to go to the dealer. Yeah, the car and, you yeah. wanted was not there. No, they, they can't make enough of them. They can't keep them on the lots unless you want to pay like $10,000 over MSRP. Oh, then you can have one today. Okay. Yeah. So then they come back and say, well, sorry, this car is not going to be ready. But if you order for 2024 model and it's yeah. a, and you decided to order the hybrid, now they're like, no, nah, you can't do the hybrid. Go get the Yeah, you can take, they're like, take your chances if you want a hybrid, but what an ask you might not get it. But I, yeah, so I switched to the gas engine, mm -hmm. so I'm going to be getting half the miles per gallon. But Are you one of these hard-ass Ford men or what? No, I'm not. Why nah. don't you just decide, fuck it, I'm going Hyundai. Uh, yeah, I don't want my car to get <laughs> stolen by t random TikTokers, so I'm good on the, on the Hyundai. <laughs> if they ever fix that issue, yeah, I'm good. All yeah. right, dude. Well, I'm sorry that you're dealing with that. So when the hell are you going to mm. replace that 38-year-old car you got <laughs> next year? It, it's 20 years old, by the way. But uh, no. yeah, it's still going, man. So I haven't even hit 200,000 miles on that thing. Okay, yet. so why are you? What are you going to do with the well, old car? Well, because it's like parts of that car. The engine, like mechanically, it's good, but yeah. it's like, the trim and like the seats are all fucked up and you know, they're staying <laughs> like the headliners coming down. Like it's 20 years old, yeah. even though the engine's still functioning, like the niceties of the car are like falling apart. The plastic is like getting heat cracked, like stuff you can't really replace anymore or maintain. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's falling apart. Like O rings are, you know, need to be replaced everywhere. And it's like, you know, it's, it's time to go. Yeah. 20, 20 years is about the limit on a car. For and me, how long? Have you, how old was the car when you got it? Uh, I bought it. It was ten years old when I bought it. Wow, you, you've yeah. had it that long. Yeah, I've had it ten years. Yeah. Good God, I knew you had this old <laughs> ass car. I thought it was like three. Well, because I had two cars back then. I had my Jeep Cherokee mm -hmm. back then. 
Ah, oh, your brother's ah. up in here. Just became a member. Oh, what's yeah. up? It's my brother, the truck driver. Why are you just now becoming a member, dude? God Almighty, cheap bastard. We've been yeah. on the air six weeks. I'm kidding. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Join my brother, the truck driver. Yes, please. And become a member of our show. Uh, you go to the you go to our YouTube page and you click. Uh, why don't I always forget this word? Uh, support. Help. Join. Join. That's it. Join. <laughs> I'm going to get used to this YouTube and stuff before you know it. Go to the YouTube page, click join. Shit. They'll give you some options. I've got a lot better at this YouTube. God almighty. And you go on there and you become a member and it's six bucks a month to support our show. All right. We have major celebrity death. You know, I used to do celebrity death watch uh, on the old radio show. Decided to get rid of it for uh, uh, several reasons, but we, I, I'm still going to cover celebrity deaths. I've been thinking about lately of maybe resurrecting Celebrity Death Watch in some form. Obviously, we're in the middle of the year, but I've thought about resurrecting it. But before we get into the latest massive celebrity death that happened yesterday and saddened many people in San Antonio, Texas, let us discuss cars even further as we discuss RNR Auto Glass, the only place you should ever take a car in this town. Uh, if you need glass fixed in your vehicle, it is RNR right by the airport at 281 in Tacoma. They are fast. You know, lots of dudes don't have time for bullshit. Like LG's going to wind up waiting two years to get a car. This is one of those companies where they realize, okay, this dude's got a cracked windshield or whatever. We got to get him in and out of here. No screwing around three days. No having a carpool. No having an Uber to work or nothing or borrow your old lady's car. They're fast. Get that car in there today. It'll be out today. They got a sweet inventory in there. They're Boodle San Antonio. They'll give you a Taylor Especial, the only place to ever get cars fixed in your vehicle. It is RNR Auto Glass. Okay. So we have a big celebrity death on our hands here. Pee Wee Herman has entered Davy Jones' locker. Oh, no. A.K.A. Paul Rubens. So we've all, everybody does a fake Pee Wee Herman. Ha <laughs> ha! See, I used to do one as a kid. It was horrible. I've never tried to do it on the air before. Let's see. <laughs> That's not good, is it? Hey. Yeah. Hey, pull out your wiener. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> if you think this is the show that's going to pay respect to the dead when they've got that kind of history, you got the wrong show. So, Pee Wee Herman. A.K.A. Paul Rubens has entered Davy Jones' locker at the age of 70. He had cancer, and nobody knew. This is kind of like, what well, like, was it, uh, Norm MacDonald had cancer for years and never told anybody. And Paul Rubens, I want to call him Pee Wee, posthumously released a letter yesterday via his representation, apologizing for not sharing with the public that he had had cancer for six years. And I guess Rubens had realized, started to realize, okay, the end is near. Uh, Mecca, laka, hi, mecca, honey, ho, I'm going to die soon, yo. <laughs> I can't. I can't talk about Phoebe Herman without fucking around. So he's had cancer for like six years, shared that he'd been battling it, didn't want to say anything because he wanted his fans to just remember him as sweet loving dick dick pulling child pornography possessing sweet fun loving alamo loving Pee Wee herman you know and it was funny i was so the alamo released a statement yesterday itself because of the famous movie he had in the mid 80s which i'm sure you're aware of you're a gen xer or kind of you're like what are you born nah. you're millennial ish uh, yeah ish have ish. you seen Pee Wee's big adventure of course when Who is the last when is the last time you watched it yeah, I mean, it's been over a decade, but I'd say 12 years or so. I mean, what the fuck? I haven't watched it since I saw it in the theater, probably, in the mid-80s as a kid. Uh, they put it on some, I think it was on, like, Netflix or something, and I just happened to randomly put it on. And You know, it's nostalgic. It's a good it's movie. Nostalgic. It still holds its weight. Like, it's it didn't age at all. Well, I mean, well, okay. Pee Wee aged. Like, it's sure. like watching the, like... Ernest Scared Stupid movies. It has a little bit of, like, sure. nostalgia to it. The veins in his wiener, <laughs> his famous wiener have aged, for sure, but the movie hadn't, I guess. I, I don't want to go waste the 90 minutes of my life watching it to see if it still has the same old nostalgia. Because this is, again, this is one of the, I'm going to piss people off, but it's true. This is one of those movies that 
when we're kids, we all fall in love with um, in the moment and then cherish it forever. And then if you make the mistake of going back and watching it later on, you're like, wow, this is, this is dog shit. I just threw 90 minutes of my life into the can. There's a lot of TV shows like that that I grew up on and just loved and worshipped as a kid. And every once in a while on Comedy Central or some shit at night, I'll stumble on an old sitcom. Oh, the Dukes of Hazzard are on. Oh, and it's like, oh, my God. I was a dumbass when I was seven. Anyhow, so Paul Rubens is a dead at 70. And the Alamo released a statement because obviously Pee Wee's Big Adventure had that the whole time he's trying to find his stolen bicycle, which is, which is in the basement of the Alamo. He gets all the way to the Alamo and realize that it, realizes that it doesn't, there is no basement in the Alamo. However, as the Alamo people released yesterday, we, they do have a basement in the gift shop. So underneath the gift shop part, is a basement, but not in the church part, the big, you know, the yeah, big, I, the I, mission part. I believe that very basement is where they used to house uh, all of Phil Collins' collection. They had a bunch of that shit in there. Yeah. Uh, where is all that stuff now? He donated it. It's there at I the know, museum. I know, I thought they, like, yeah. auctioned a bunch of that off last year. Yeah, he had, like, a hundred, like, Bowie knives or something like yeah, that. So they, they might have. And then yeah. Phil was, like, devastated to find out that a certain percent of them were fake. Oh uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, so. that's. I mean, if you're gonna have a big collection like that, you're gonna get some shit that's not that's not real. But anyhow, yes, in the basement underneath the gift shop, they had a bunch of Phil stuff. The Big Adventure came out. I want to say in like '84, '85, and it made like forty million dollars, which at the time was when insane. You know that weirdo Tim Burton directed that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. And we got some people in here. Don't don't spoil the ending or anything. Oh, okay, I won't spoil yeah, the no ending. Spoilers. Okay, at some point we got to be able to talk about endings endings of movies. Forty uh, year old movies we need to be able to get to talk about. It made forty million bucks, and you know, Paul Rubens was back in San Antonio like maybe ten years ago. He was doing something for Top Chef or one of those one of those cooking shows, and they they did a bit at the Alamo again. You know, like ten years ago, and he was saying that. That 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 shoot where the scene of him coming out of the Alamo like, oh no, there's no basement. Him running out of the damn church part. That was a one day shoot. They flew in that night, had dinner with the Texas Film Commission, woke up the next morning, went over there and shot the scene and got out of there. It was like one night and an, and an afternoon. And Paul was joking that like all these California filmmakers that he was with doing the movie, including the great Tim Burton. We're not used to eating Tex-Mex. And they went out and had a bunch of Tex-Mex that night. They were in town with the Texas Film Commission, and all of the film crew had the, had the chortle the next day. That's the story that I took from that. Uh, despite his run-ins with the law, that dude still did stuff. They what Was it Judd Apatow directed Big Holiday or some shit like 15 years? Not even 15, like maybe five or six years ago. But, of course, we cannot talk about the great Pee Wee Herman, a.k.a. Paul Rubens, without discussing his run-ins with the law. Not for, not for possession, not for having a bar fight. It's called cocaine. <sighs> he was asturbating with an M in an adult theater, I want to say, somewhere in West Hollywood. What else do you do in Hollywood theaters, you know? You, you, you asturbate with an M. He got busted doing that, spent years as a punchline, but then in 2001 got, got popped again on possession of child pornography. You remember this? Oh, wait. Yeah, but that somehow got reduced to a misdemeanor. Slowly piecemealed his career back together and wound up doing like Pee Wee Herman Broadway tour. Now, if you went and saw that, you really were a weirdo. Anyhow, he was well-liked by actors and you know, well-liked by a lot of that Hollywood scene, which is weird because of his history. You know, if, you, uh, if you're on Team Hollywood, you can get away with a lot. They just they still talk good about you, even though you got popped for child pornography and jerking off in a movie theater. Um, and I think he gets a lot of credit for being a bigger genius than he actually was. He was funny. I don't want to trash the dude. The guy just died, but still. You got to keep it real, man. Um, there are people in Hollywood that think that that whole bit was just... that was That was on purpose. He was... That whole Pee Wee Herman character was, to, it was to support like marginalized people. It was to support people that were different, eccentrics, Tim Burton type, type type stuff. But Paul Rubens maintained forever 
No, I was just doing a bit for kids. That's all that was, and it happened to blow up. I, I, it is, I was not trying to be some sort of genius outside of the box. I was just trying to do goofball bits for kids. But anyway, Paul Rubens is a dead. Elite Collision is not. If your car is hurt, but not all the way dead, like LG's car is approaching death. But if your car is not near death, but it's just banged up, Elite Collision of Bernie, Texas. North of the rim off of I-10, Boodle, San Antonio, locally owned and operated people up there. It is about, oh, probably 10 minutes past the rim right off of I-10. Exit 542 in Bernie. They do weekly appointments. Those are available. They work with all insurances, and they do private pay. So if you have a collision, you need repairs, elite collision. Fender benders, elite collision. Hail damage, elite collision. You need, some, you need a paint job because of the body damage, elite collision. When your car gets beat, call elite. All right. <laughs> It's Mike Taylor Live. You can sh- please subscribe for free, share our show, like us, tell your homies, become a member. It's only six bucks a month. From time to time, we have guests on here, and I want to have guests on when it's when it's good and the guests are good. And I feel good about this one. And you know, and and also this is this is the thing we're getting ready to start doing. Well, we're getting ready to do on Saturday, I should say. And so I, I'm excited to bring on today's guest today. Let us introduce to Thunderdomers Shannon May, who is the outreach director of an organization called the Guardian Community. You know, we've been talking for a couple of weeks now on this show about this raffle we have coming up on Saturday. Um, it's going to start at 2 o'clock. I think I, well, they want everybody to kind of start showing up around 2 o'clock. And at 4 o'clock, hard 4 o'clock, I'm going to start uh, anchoring a, the raffle up there at the Ringer Pub at Jones Maltz Burger and Thousand Oaks. Um, that's where we'll be on this Saturday with a raffle. We got a lot of cool, bunch of cool stuff too. I stuff that you don't even know about LG. I need to tell you about the number, some of the stuff that came in last night. And we're going to have a lot of things to raffle off. So we need a lot of people to show up, buy raffle tickets on Saturday, hang out and drink a beer with us and chill and see if you don't win something. But this is all to benefit uh, an organization called the Guardian Community, and Shannon is the outreach director on there. Hi, Shannon. Thank you for doing this. Hi, Mike. Thank you for having me. Of course. Let's talk first about, I want to talk about anything you want to with regards to the raffle and the organization and why people should show up. So let's just start there. Let's. I, I can sit here and tell people what the Guardian Community is, but nobody can explain what Guardian Community is and does better than you. So why don't you just tell us all what is the Guardian Community all about? What is it? Absolutely. So um, the Guardian community was started as a nonprofit to take care of our local veterans and first responders. Um, We do a lot of different things. We try and build a community, basically. So our main role is like weekly golf outings we do as therapy. So we come out. um, Lots of times these guys just don't really have any place to go, anybody to talk to that understands. Um, so that's kind of what we are. We, we reach out to them. We bring them on. They play golf together. They have fun. Uh, we're out on the golf courses on weekends. I have four people working for me that actually go out there and raise money for this organization. Mm-hmm. But it goes to taking care of them. I mean, sometimes they need therapy for PTSD. Sometimes they need a service dog. Sometimes they just need help. Just, you know, that camaraderie that once they get out of the military, they're kind of lost. And they don't, they feel kind of weird around civilians. They don't know how to interact anymore. So this is just kind of a way for them to feel safe, feel good and, and enjoy them, their life now after they've served our country. Shannon, forgive the question. Are you a veteran? I am a veteran. Okay. I'm an Army veteran. Okay. So I, I, that, that leads to the next question. How does, and this is a dumbass civilian question and I apologize, but I, I'm sure. serious. How, you know, you hear all the time about suicide and depression, anxiety, struggling to get back into society. It's almost like it's like some of the same things you hear about men who or and women who've been locked up in prison. How does that happen to a military service member? How does that how does that happen where they come well, home and are and are lost? First of all, I can I can answer this really well. Um my father was a Vietnam veteran, he was army and this last Friday marks 20 years that he committed suicide for PTSD. Um, I cut his hair. We were planning to take my daughter to the zoo. And 30 minutes later, he was gone. I didn't see it. Nobody around him saw it. Um, 
the thing is, is they're, they're on a mission. They go over, they see things, they do things that nobody should have to do to protect our country, um, especially this last ordeal that we've had out over in the Middle East. I mean, there was little kids coming up to them strapped with bombs. And how do you, how do, you do that? I mean, how do you take out a little kid? This, that's just not okay. So, but they're mission focused. They're told what to do, how to do it, when to be there. Um, they get out and all of a sudden they don't have that mission. They don't know what to do. They come home and they kind of are lost. They, you know, the VA is supposed to be there to help them, but lots of times they're, it's not enough. Um, and especially men, I will tell you, men have a really hard time admitting that they're having some sort of struggle in their mind. They just, they've been taught to man up and they don't talk to people. They just kind of pretend they're okay. And how can you be okay after going through something like that? You can't. That's just not possible. Right. You know, it's like, there was, what was the movie? There was, a, I'm, I'm going to compare a movie to real life here, but forgive me. So there was the movie, I think it was Jeremy Renner. And I think he, he played, I think it was, was it the Hurt Locker, I want to say, where his job was to like try to snuff out bombs. They would put the big suit on him. He'd have to go on there and try to defuse the bomb. And his right. character, his character in the movie, like, okay, cool, your your time is up. They sent him home, and he was so depressed, so lost, like with like nothing to do, no cause, no purpose. The character just winds up just reenlisting on his own and putting himself back into that insanity, because back home where there was no insanity, the character like couldn't deal with what the fuck do I do now? And like kept reenlisting as a way to like, well, this is my life. I'm just going to risk death forever. As long as, as long as they'll let me reenlist, I'm going to do it. There's something dysfunctional about that. You know, there is absolutely. It's, it's dysfunctional, but as a civilian, you don't understand it. You just don't understand it because I mean, we have, we can do whatever we want to do. We go to college, we go get a job. Everything's just normal. We can tell people, no, I don't want to show up for work today. I'm going to call out when you're in the military, you don't get, you don't get that option. I mean, it's mm -hmm. basically like, Hey, you're here. Here's your mission. Do it. And I mean, there's, they're, they're told what to do. If it's as little as mow the grass, you're on detail this week, you're mowing the grass. So somebody's, you know, telling them how to do it, when to be there and why to do it. And their reason is they love this country and they're trying to protect it. But after doing something like that for so long, it just kind of becomes who they are. Man. All right. How do you guys, how do y'all find, I don't want to just exclude women, but so how do you find people to help? How do you, oh, we, oh, this person needs help. Let's help him. How do you find that person? So that's the hard part. Um, I kind of need the community's help on that, to tell you the mm -hmm. truth. Right now, we have a, a big golf tournament coming up. It's um, November 6th, the Golf Club of Texas. It's called okay. Camo versus Badges. So what I'm doing is I'm putting a veteran group against a first responder group. Okay. There's going to be 18 teams of each, and they're going to play for a cause. So I'm going to pick one veteran and one first responder in the community that is in need. So I'm needing people to email me, let me know if they know somebody, give me their story. Um, we're going to go through and vote on who we're playing for, and we're going to help them. I don't care if it's something as small as they need their rent paid, they need an electric bill paid, they can't afford food this month, they need a new roof, mm -hmm. they need a service dog, um, they need a prosthetic. Whatever somebody needs, give me the stories, email me, let me know, and then we're going to play for that cause. And then okay, whoever, cool. you know, whoever wins, um, and I'm not saying that the, uh, the loser is not going to be taken care of too, but it's a pretty good uh, incentive. So I really look to the community to help me on this. Okay. We are veteran. I mean, we're military city USA there. Everybody knows a veteran is related to a veteran is a veteran. Um, there's something. Okay. So, All right. Right now. Okay. Very good. Well, well we're going to start helping the organization this Saturday at the ringer. Um, and you and I, obviously, I, I don't think Thunder Dome knows you and I, we sat down with Kevin, uh, one of the co-owners at the ringer a few weeks ago to talk about this thing. And I was, I was touched that here's a guy who's a teacher who's, you know, co-business partners with another teacher and they decided to start a bar. And now they decided to get involved with you guys. And it's just like, I'm super stoked that y'all asked me to be a part of this just because this is a really cool collaboration. Local business owners, cool organization like Guardian Community, having a chance to go be a part of a raffle and do it at a bar and have fun in an environment that's supposed to be fun, but for a, a hell of an important cause. And I, had, I didn't know that about your dad. I, I appreciate you sharing that story. That was, that was touching. Um, that's why I do what I do. It's, it's, my, sure. you know, it's one of those things that 
I can sit there and dwell on, or I can help others from going through. And I've kind yeah. of gone to the other side. For and, sure. You know, okay. Kevin's been amazing. And um, Kevin actually met us out on a golf course playing golf. His that's father cool. is a veteran. Mm -hmm. So that's why this touched his heart. Very cool. All right. Awesome. So I want to make sure I do a damn good job because it's an honor to get to represent and help you guys out. So Thunderdome, help me help them by showing up to the ringer this week. All right. I don't want to make it all super serious. I want to have fun. So the other thing that I found out that day when we were hanging out at the ringer the other day, okay, tell me your your connection once again before I screw this up with the local radio dude, Billy Madison, my good buddy, Billy Madison. <laughs> How do you know Billy again? Billy's actually my very best friend. Um, That's crazy. It, it is crazy. Uh, I have two daughters and Billy basically stepped up when I got divorced and um, became their their stand in fill in dad, picked him up from school every day. And wow. his his daughter's my goddaughter. And um, I tell you what, I don't know that I would have been able to make it as a single mom without Billy. Wow. He is the right. soccer mom. He is the soccer mom. He, that's his favorite thing to do. Let's pick him up. Let's take him to gymnastics. You know, let's let's do. I, I know on the show he sounds like nobody would trust their kids with this man, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he is actually. I think I've said that too. <laughs> yep, absolutely. But he is actually the most amazing person I have ever known, as far as the dad role. He um he takes him to Disney World. I mean, he does puppet shows in the kitchen. Oh, see. He, he, he probably doesn't want anybody to know that kind of stuff, but he's actually awesome so i've met him once years ago at a, at a charity thing it was quick hey man how's it going nice to meet you but that was it we were we went about our time but he and i and the in past have had a running rivalry because we both support the salvation army's red kettle campaign during christmas right. time and so we'll talk shit about each other publicly we don't even know each other i <laughs> I think I once, well, years ago, we used to have Who's the Biggest Douchebag in Town contest on the show, <laughs> and Billy got nominated one year. Oh, my God, I think it pissed him off, but maybe it didn't. Maybe he just pretended it did, so the fact that you were, like, real close to him was pretty funny, and yeah. you, like, messed up my whole, like, I wanted to always pretend that he was this character that I had drummed up in my head, and you telling me stuff like what you just told me that messes that up, so... But it's, yeah, it's, he's got two different people behind the microphone and in real life. He is definitely two different. People. Otherwise, cool. I would never have trusted my children in his care. <laughs> Based on the dude we hear. All right. Well, exactly. I invite I invite Billy to come out and hang out Saturday if he's got time. That'd be that'd be so badass be awesome. if he were to drop by. All right. I will, so. I will let him know. All right, cool. Look, thanks for doing this. I Shannon, appreciate uh, real, that. Real oh, go quick, ahead, LG. Before you go, there's there's some questions in the chat room oh, here. Oh, are you cool with questions, Shannon? No, it's just one question. Okay, cool. Yeah, what is it's, it? It's for those who can't attend the event on August 5th. They're wondering how they could donate to the cause. So there's two different ways. Um, they can actually buy raffle tickets. There is a Venmo um, attachment. I'm sure that Mike can get that to you to yep. buy raffle tickets. Um, other than that, they can reach out to me. It's Shannon at guardiancommunity.org. And um, I would love to talk to anybody about donating. All that we can get in the community support, we definitely can use. Sweet. Okay. Is that the email that we used to link with you to do this interview? It is. Okay, it is. cool. Very good. All right. So we'll, we'll share that later on. I had a buddy last yeah, night ask me. Cell phone, and whatever you need to do, okay. good to get out there because uh, I am always open to talk to anybody about helping. Okay, so I had a buddy reach out last night who actually lives in Fort Worth and obviously can't make it down here. And he's like, dude, can I buy a couple of raffle tickets and just like Venmo you? So now I'll just send him you guys Venmo and have him do it that way. And we'll do it like either that. Way, or, yeah, either way, whatever. Okay. Uh, you can just buy them for him. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah. Okay. All right, Shannon. I'll see you Saturday. Thank you very much for you popping see you on. Saturday. All right, see I you later. That, that would be Bye. funny if Billy Madison showed up. All right, it's this Saturday. Which is the fifth of gosh, is today the first? Holy shit. Yep. God almighty. So it's this Saturday, the fifth. Um, we're gonna get rolling around two. Uh the raffle itself starts right at four. And I was planning to be there like an hour when the raffle started, but shit, look at the stuff we've got here. Let me pull this up. This is just so far. Uh what we have, we have a hundred dollar gift card to the hangar, our old buddies at the hangar. Hundred dollar a gift card to the ringer, which is where we're going to be $200, just visa gift card to do whatever you want to with a hundred bucks to, uh, the old, to the, uh, was the old main, the old main gift card, hundred bucks. JT's our boy, Tucker, hundred bucks. 
Ricky's Tattoos has donated 150 bucks in like tattoo shit. Uh, also, there's a foursome to Olympia Hills, which is a $280 value to play golf. There's a foursome to Lady Bird Johnson, $260 value to play golf. Charity Bar has donated to 100 bucks. We have a $200 pair of Oakley sunglasses that we're going to give away. And just last night, of course, and we've been pimping these T-shirts. I had it on yesterday, that the, the T-shirt with the W on it, the Wimbenyama. It's got the W, our boy from uh, Fitted Threads. Yep. Got the W, the Whataburger-looking W, which Whataburger has already come out and said they're cool with, so that's fine. But it's W for Wimbenyama, and it, we got a bunch of those shirts we're going to give away. The catch on that, you have to be a member of Mike Taylor Live to be eligible to win the T-shirt. All right? You also have to be a member to be eligible to win the other thing that came down last night. So yesterday on this show, remember we did we, we showed a video of Cuts by Jones. Uh, my boy Jones with a Z, probably the he's he's a local wood mate, woodcutter. Probably one of the best things he's well, not probably it's one of the best things he's ever done. It's a Victor Wimbanyama cutout that we played we aired yesterday, and I'll post this later on my social. He has decided he was going to try to, he asked me if I would, you know, like show it to Thunderdumbers trying to sell it. He's had a change of heart. He doesn't want to sell it. He's a veteran. And so Jones wants to donate the Wimbenyama cut. And it's fucking cool. And I'll post it again later on Twitter and Facebook and such. He's going to donate this to the raffle. So we're going to give away the Wimby uh, cut on Saturday in addition to a bunch of Wimp and Yama t-shirts, and to get those stuff, you got to be a member of Mike Taylor Live. All right? All right. So that's really cool, and I appreciate Shannon for popping on and, and, and talking about the, the event coming up. All right, show also brought to you by Live Oak Vodka, the official vodka. Got a Live Oak sticker right here on my laptop. Live Oak Vodka, remarkably clean, with soft expressions of wet stone and rainwater. Light whispers of Douglas fir and American oak are distinct, enjoyable, and very subtle. I'm a vodka drinker. And I'm discriminatory usually about, about what I use because I don't put a lot of mix in my vodka. And Live Oak Vodka is one that I like, and I'll be damned if they haven't joined up to become the official vodka of Thunderdome. They are Texas distilled down in Beeville, out by Corpus Christi, Texas. It is the official vodka of Thunderdome, Live Oak Vodka. Okay. There's some Spurs news today that came down last night. It's Spurs. It's Spurs. What happened to that old guy? Has he gone the ways of Paul Rubens? That was know. a horrible thing to say. I don't know why I said that just now. I was trying to think of something, and that's, that's what mm -hmm. came out. That was awful. Video, it makes uh, me look horrible. He needs to come up with another song. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I ask if he's still wrong. Go, 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 go for six. Go for six. Okay. What was it? The Race for Sace. You remember? Oh, he did do another one. Yeah, right? yeah. He yeah, did Race yeah, for okay. Sace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't got it, though. But, hey, hey the Race for Sace continues. We're an inch close. Well, we're more. We're seven foot five inches closer in the Race for Sace. <laughs> and we have a bunch of Wimbenyama stuff to give away in the raffle coming down on Saturday at the Ringer Pub. All right, the AT&T Center is officially about to no longer become the AT&T Center. AT&T, no which, which inherited the AT inherited the Spurs Arena from was SBC. When AT&T acquired SBC, they had to go from SBC Center to AT&T Center. And I don't think I don't know that the people I don't know that the corporate homeboys at AT&T ever once really wanted to be the AT&T Center, but they inherited the building so it is what it is. And then when they upped and moved up to the Metro Sex years ago, I thought, well, shit, I hope this doesn't begin. I hope this isn't the beginning of the end of the partnership with the Spurs and putting their, you know, their logo on the arena because, you know, it's, it's the Spurs and you know, their familia. And I know they make a lot of money and there's a lot of revenue sharing in the NBA. But, you know, the Spurs don't need to be losing sponsors, just like we don't need to be using sponsors. A fledgling NBA team like the San Antonio Spurs. And so the contract, with AT&T in the arena actually expired, I think, over a year ago. But they decided to go ahead and keep it for one more year just to keep the, the name on the building. But days are dwindling. We were approaching the times to where it just be the Spurs arena. That's no bueno in, in today's modern NBA corporate-driven league. I've been thinking, well, maybe HEB steps up. Maybe USAA steps up. Well, alas... 
Multiple reports have come down last night that it's going to be called. I'm going to take a guess. Or have you seen this already, LG? Take a seen guess. It. Oh, damn it. It's going to be called Frost Bank Center. Ding, 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 ding. The official bank of Texas, Frost Bank, has decided to put its name on the arena. So going forth, not officially yet, and I'm not even sure the Spurs have commented yet. This is all a bunch of reports, but it's like 50 people now reporting it, so it's done. It's going to turn into Frost Bank Center. And here's my, my knee-jerk reaction to Frost Bank Center. Makes sense, Frost Bank's locally owned Texas-operated bank. My other knee jerk is give Wimbenyama his twenty percent commission. Thank this is another this is another result of drafting Wimby. And what I, I, what I read in the Express News this morning was an, an anonymous source has told the Express News an anonymous source from Frost Bank that getting Wimby has a lot. Frost was already kind of kicking the tires on maybe stepping up and, and putting its name on the arena, but. The Spurs drafting Wimbenyama put it over the top, and they're damn. They were like, "Okay, let's do this. We're about to win titles. We're going to be on national TV a lot. Fuck it, let's go ahead and pull the trigger." So it's Frost Bank now that's going to save the AT and T Center. Well, not that particular building. I assume that here in five years, when they start, when they move to Inner Downtown or wherever the hell they're going to move, I'm assuming that it'll continue to be the Frost Bank Center. And don't think that wasn't a player either. No question the Spurs have told Frost Bank, hey, by the way, we're going to have a badass brand new barn to play in too, and it's going to be on the, it's going to be on the good side of I-37. <laughs> it's going to be right downtown or near the Pearl-ish. It's just, we got Wimp and Yama. We're going to have a brand new badass building. Why don't you jump on board and put your name on it? And they're like, cool, we'll do that. So it's going to be the Frost Bank Center. And again, I think the Spurs ought to give Wimbenyama a 20% commission because just that kid just getting drafted has led to, again, and what did we guess? When Wimbenyama got drafted, we were guessing hundreds of millions of dollars. The Spurs franchise just went up in value. She, now Frost Banks decided to step up and become the, become the sponsor, and a big part of it is Wimby getting drafted. Give that kid 20%. Give him 20%. All right, so that's... That's pretty cool. And I can't, outside of like H-E-B or Fred's Fish Fry, I can't think of a more appropriate name to stick on our place than Frost Bank Center. If it wasn't going to be like USAA or something like that, so that's 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 pretty kick-ass. All right, it's Ass Whip Tuesday. Lots of ass whips coming in here. Um, I'm not ass whipped at all. I'm actually really pleased that we now have two sponsors to for soccer fields over at San Antonio, San Antonio City Soccer Club. Thank you to the uh, Methodist Health Center. The Methodist Health System has stepped up and sponsored one of our fields over at San Antonio City Soccer. If you want information on becoming a member of San Antonio City Soccer, jump in here and DM me, email me, whatever, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Here's what Methodist Health System is going to get. Here's what Sunburst Gymnastics is going to get because they decided to step up and sponsor one of our pitches. They're going to get, obviously, tons of run on this show, and that's free run. It's I'm, I'm just doing this because I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a member of the club, of the San Antonio City Soccer Club. You're going to get me talking about you for free. You're going to get them talking about you on their websites. You're going to get your name on one of the fields. You're going to get your name on one of the entrance signs. We're talking field banners and website mentions. Tons of love from not only them, but us too as, as, as a show. But that's just because you're just also going to get a ton of eyeballs in a smaller scale, but in similar vein, just like Frost decided, you know what? We're going to be on national TV a bunch now. Let's go ahead and sponsor the arena. This is the biggest soccer club in town. They have 1,500-ish players from ages 4 to 19. And you're going to get hundreds and hundreds, thousands of eyeballs seeing your name if you put your name on one of our fields. It is the San Antonio City Soccer Club, the official soccer club of this show. All right, it is indeed Ass Whip Tuesday. Many of you with ass whips in here. Tex Navarro. My daughter and my son wanting to go to La Contera for back-to-school shopping. Nombre. Why can't they be like my mom? My mom just take me to the clearance aisles and, may, and maybe get three shirts total. Just one pair of shoes for the whole damn year. Salud, Mayor. Where did you go school shopping? 
as a kid? Did you, you didn't go to Lock and Tear, did you? School shopping. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got whatever my brother wasn't wearing anymore. That's what I got. I got hand-me-downs. I got like, you know, a five-year-old old pair of white jabots or something like that. And some Yaga shirts yeah. with holes in them. Where did you know. we, where did, where are we at in society? When, when did we become this society where, okay, school's starting. Let's go get a whole new fucking wardrobe for a 10-year-old. How'd the only school start? shopping I did was for supplies, like right. notebook, well, you notebook had paper to. and trapper keepers. You sure, know? you had to. My grandmother took me school shopping, and I never knew why, but all I knew I was getting me a new shirt. We, we She always took me to Mervyn's. Y'all remember Mervyn's? I go yeah, to Mervyn's. Like Mervyn's and Solo Serve. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Poor man's, you know, Dillard's or Foley. Remember Foley's? Poor man's Foley's was, uh, was freaking Mervyn's. And it was one pair of sneakers, two shirts, two pair of pants, and that's it. You got to make it last. Of course, but within a week, you're still you're back to wearing your old shit that you already had anyway. I never really understood the concept as a kid growing up, why I had to get a whole new wardrobe just to go back to school where a bunch of buddies already knew that I hung out with all summer where we're at. But she wanted to take me to school shopping, so, so we did. Uh, damn sure wasn't going to no Lock and Tara. Hopovich is in here. Ass whip today, guy in front of me at the HEB buying a single bottle of vegetable oil in the regular checkout lane while 10, 15, 25 items under lanes right next to us are empty. Yeah, dude, I've given up on grocery store etiquette. People are just going to be assholes no matter where they are. That's just all there's going to, that's just all there is to it. Matthew son, Chick-fil-A putting the wrong cheese on my sandwich. Oh, I just pull the damn cheese off and go along with it. I like that pepper jack myself. Uh, David's in here. All the scuttle about the damn show. The best of both of y'all. It's going to work out. It always does. Thank you, David. It'll be forgotten in a week. Um, Sean, my ass whip. People having to make hard decisions for the sake of their career and family. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. I know it's so hard to take care of your family and make hard decisions. Um, Arthur, most obvious ass whip ever. No Puma. Been with you since 2007, but the end of yesterday's show has me on the fence. Okay, Arthur. Let's not act like uh, we were married 30 years. Well, I don't think there's, this is not, I mean, we, we're going to we're gonna try to help veterans suffering from PTSD on Saturday at a fucking raffle who can barely pay their light bill. Let's not get all up in arms over a little YouTube show. Love y'all hard, but let's not get, let's not overreact to stuff. Changes happen. It's unfortunate. They happen for reasons, and I've had... Six drummers in this band. I've held, I've held, I've, this is the third stint with LG as the drummer of the band. So it happens, and you move on. You move on. All right. Uh, if you're looking to move, uh, man, the official mortgage man of this show, Brad Hardwick and my boys over at hardwickmortgage.com. If you're thinking about upgrading and wondering how much you can afford, call to get pre-qualified home values have gone way the hell up significantly in recent years around these parts and maybe you've got some equity in your house well sell that some bitch and pay off the rest of your debts go get you some retirement money whatever you need money for if you're looking to move on your house and take advantage of the equity now's the time and hardwick mortgage is the place the official mortgage company of thunderdome is Hardwick Mortgage. If you're in the house, maybe you're looking to buy a new home. That's cool, too. They can do that. Hardwick Mortgage can shop around all kinds of lenders all over the area to get you the best deal. Uh, if you're looking to purchase maybe a new or used manufactured home, which is becoming a massive rage now with everybody, the you know, house price is going up, people moving out to the hinterlands. Brad can do that, too. Maybe you just want to buy land, acreage. That's cool. Be a Texas landowner. They can help you with that at Hardwick Mortgage, too. The information presented for informational purposes that is not without commitment to lend or extend credit. Information and or dates are subject to change without notice. All loans are subject to credit approval. Other restrictions may apply. As a result of refinancing, your total finance charges may be higher over the life of the loan. So go to hardwickmortgage.com for information. It is Hardwick Financial Services in MLS ID 1972012. Hardwickmortgage.com. Hardwickmortgage.com. Com. Thank you to Shannon May with the Guardian community. I'm looking, and, have, and I was already excited about doing it, but after having her on now, I'm really looking forward to going out and hanging out at the Ringer on Saturday. Yeah, um, Flag Runner Cruise is in here with a question about that event. Okay, cool. If, if, they buy, if someone buys online raffle tickets, do they have to be physically in attendance on the 5th to win? No, no. no that, that's, that's why we're offering you a chance to buy them online. If we pull your ticket, you know, um, 
then you don't have to be present. No, we'll figure that out. And I'm, they, I'm sure, Shannon, they have a way of figuring out the digital, you know, obviously the physical ticket's not going to be in there. Unless they fill one out for you and put it in there. It will take, it'll get taken care of. Like I, my buddy Rudy reached out last night, hey, man, I want to buy a couple of raffle tickets, which, by the way, I forgot to mention, they're only 10 bucks, or you can get three for 25 or just don't be a cheap bastard. Come in there and buy 10 of them. And what do we get for $10? Well, for, well, for, well, nothing. You get one damn ticket. Don't be a cheapskate. Come in there and buy 10 of them. And get your heart get your heart right with the Lord. There's a maelstrom of problems in the veteran community that we all know about. This is nothing new, and we're going to do our little part as a little show to give back on Saturday at the Ringer. So thank you to Shannon, thank you to DJ LG and the viewers. Uh, subscribe, become a member. It's only six bucks a month. Jesus will love you if you do that too. Members only on the Wimbenyama cutout. And the Wimbenyama t-shirts we're going to give away as part of the raffle, too, on Saturday. All right? All right. Love y'all hard. We'll see you in here manana. Later. Oh, come back, you puppy! This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you.